earthbound grapplers for whom grunts and groans spell fame and fortune. But a special investigation by a current affair has turned up allegations that could outrage the biggest wrestling fan. John Johnston has this startling look into the world of blood, sweat, and jeers. I don't think if there are any rules whatsoever other than whatever will, ma will make the, the almighty dollar come in. Whatever uh, uh, works, do it. If you drop your soap in the shower, you look left, you look right, ahead and behind you before you bent down and picked it up. Go! They'd all be doing cocaine. Uh, they'd be smoking marijuana. They'd be doing whatever they wanted to do. And these girls would be forming sex acts on them. They'd be doing two or three guys on a girl. The carnival package that you see now, the almost freak sideshow that it has become, it totally makes you embarrassed to say, yes, I am a pro wrestler. What goes on inside the ring of the WWF is billed as family entertainment. The battles now going on outside of the ring are anything but. Allegations of drug abuse, sex scandals, and child molestation. These allegations come from former insiders who say they saw it firsthand. They claim for years, WWF chief Vince McMahon has had a lip lock on the business. But now they claim they've been able to break his stranglehold and are ready to take Vince McMahon down for the count. There's no question you wanted the monsters. Bruno San Martino, the first real Mr. Wrestling, claims Vince McMahon's monster mentality led to widespread steroid abuse in the World Wrestling Federation. A hulk of a hero named Hogan is the biggest to take a fall. This 330-pound minister of muscle apparently did not practice what he preached. While telling his young flock of followers to say their prayers, take their vitamins, and stay away from drugs, their hero Hulk was allegedly pumping up with steroids. I think he's a liar. I think he's a coward. I think he's a scum of the earth, in my opinion, for the lies that he has perpetrated on this country and perpetrated on children who idolized him. I myself injected him personally in 1987 in the Pontiac Silver Dome, in the Keel Auditorium in St. Louis, in the Cow Palace in San Francisco. Hogan, I gave him steroids. I gave him shots. I personally have injected Hulk Hogan. He personally injected me. Despite the claims of Billy Jack Haynes, Dr. D. David Schultz, and superstar Billy Graham, the Hulk says he only used steroids three times, all for medical purposes but he refused to talk with us about it. These three former wrestlers say he was not only the biggest star in the WWF, but also the biggest steroid user. He says, I was so ignorant about steroids that I took a shot every day for a year before I learned how to cycle steroids properly. Covering now from his second hip replacement surgery as a result of steroid abuse, knows all too well about the ill effects. The one-time world wrestling champion with the bulging 24-inch biceps can now barely lift himself out of a chair. Steroids have left him sterile and crippled. But he claims the Hulk was also addicted to an even more dangerous drug, cocaine. And he refused when Hogan offered to share a snort. He said, don't start taking cocaine, brother. Don't start taking it, man, because it's hard to get off of. And as he gave me this lecture, when he finished it, he proceeded to put the three lines of cocaine up his nose. While Hulk Hogan refused to talk with us, he has never been charged with cocaine abuse. If Vince McMahon says, hey, man, I want you bigger, you're going to take steroids to get bigger. If not, you're not going to have a job. Billy Jack Haynes wrestled for the WWF from 86 to 88 and claims he became addicted to steroids and codeine, an addiction that almost killed him. I got to where I was taking 10, 12, 14 a day. I was totally hooked on codeine. And I had a bad reaction on a plane going from Detroit to Miami to wrestle there. And they had an emergency stop in North Carolina. I even know I woke up in the hospital and I was on intravenous and they said they had to either give me shock treatment or a pacemaker. So I took the shock treatment. I made it. I'm still alive today. Two days later, Vince McMahon phoned me at home and said, hey, if you don't make San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Oakland, you're not going to be with the World Wrestling Federation no more. Look at that. Dr. D, David Schultz, was the quintessential bad guy bully in the WWF. Although many fans knew him as Dr. Death, you might remember him as the man who roughed up ABC's 2020 correspondent, John Stossel. 
After the attack, Schultz was fired, but he claims he was set up when he knocked Stossel down. In court papers, Dr. D says the real villain is Vince McMahon. He said, David, there's a guy here doing a national TV show. He's making a joke out of the business. I want you to tear his ass up. I want you to blast him and stay in character. I heard Vince say that I guess maybe I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done what? Shouldn't have told him to slap him. Jim Stewart was Vince McMahon's personal limo driver from 1985 until he was fired in 1990. He claims Schultz wasn't his only setup. The way he goes through people and abuses people and, and then, then throws them away, he's a pig. I was fired because I wouldn't have sex with the vice president of operations. Murray Hodgson was hired by Vince McMahon and signed a two-year contract with the WWF. Pat Patterson, the vice president of operations, was never charged with sexual harassment, but resigned when Hodgson filed suit. I just told him, I'm sorry, you've got the wrong guy. And he candidly told me, not if I wanted to keep my job, I didn't, and that I should think about it. I turned him down, and just a few weeks later, I was out on the street without a job. Can you answer any of the allegations for me now? No, I cannot. Okay, but you're the one that runs the company. Why can't you answer the questions for me? Yeah, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say to you proper way to go through this talk with Steve Plantman. So we've talked with Steve Plantman and he's told us that uh, you were not available to talk with us. I'd suggest you chat with him again. I will. When we did call the WWF back the next day, we were told Vince McMahon refused to answer any of the allegations. The World Wrestling Federation did send us a letter dated April 27, 1992, in which Murray Hodgson asked Vince McMahon for work. It kind of makes you wonder, in this phony world of good versus evil, if the real villains are working inside or outside the ring. Murray Hodgson's lawsuit against Vince McMahon is expected to go to court this summer. Now up next, the hotel